Okay. Cool. Okay. So here we are. We're going to do um, a demolding and we're going to begin finishing our caps. So this is what it looks like after we've poured the plaster into the waste mold and we're about ready to demold it. So we'll remove that from the cradle, toss the cradle aside, and then what we want to do is just gently pull the plaster bandage away from the cast a little bit so we can grab it, flip it around, and then begin pulling up on it. We want to do this in a very methodical way, working around the plaster cast so that it all comes off nicely. It's going to make it look so easy over here. I'm over here just... Well, this one might be coming... Oh, all right, there we go. So that's come away nicely. That's now going to go in the garbage. And this is what we have left. We have that. With, and notice there's a lot of stuff that needs cleaning up. There are some pits and there are some protuberances. <laughs> or carbuncles, whatever you want to call those. Um, so we do have quite a lot of cleaning up to do on this. So let's start with the parts that are sticking up off the surfaces. We want to get rid of those as much as we can. We have a number of tools that work really well for that. Some clay working tools. Uh, you can get these at the UFC bookstore. These are very useful. We also have some tools in this red toolbox here that I have set aside for all 233 students. And in this toolbox we have uh, more clay working tools. We also have some smaller tools made out of metal. And these are these kinds of, they kind of look like um, dentist tools, but they're not. They're made for uh, carving and for sculpturing. And so there are, that's a clay working tool. And there are different heads on them. On one side is a flat head, on the other side a pointing one. They're all very different. Are you having trouble there? I'm you? nervous about it. Here, do you want me to get it for you? I can do it. Okay. <laughs> Good. I'm get it. Awesome. There's also very simple tools, like these little spoons, eh, that work nice. So, if you have spoons at home, uh, you can use those. And, let's see, we have stuff like that. That's good. That's just a piece of, uh, it's, it's like a scouring pad. Um, this is only really useful if your clay is still damp. This won't do anything to this, right, or sorry, this works well if your plaster is damp. This plaster is hardened to the point where this is useless now, so we're not going to use that. Put it back in here. We also have <coughs> these tools. This is a little rusty, but it still works well. <laughs> Did you get it? Look at my teeth there. Oh, beautiful. Oh my goodness. Here, <clears throat> let's show oh, the God. audience oh, how God. cool that looks. Isn't that neat? You can see the teeth. That's fantastic. All right, that's cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so, sometimes this blade on a shirt form comes out of alignment. What you need to do is grab a screwdriver. I have one here somewhere. Oh, there it is. So grab this flathead screwdriver, and there's a screw on the back of it. So, turn that counterclockwise and then just realign that blade and then tighten that okay you don't have to over tighten it but just make it nice and snug there okay that's ready to go so a sure form 
is a wonderful tool for taking material off very quickly. Um, this sure form works in only one direction. So if you run your finger across it, you notice it's very rough in one direction, but not so rough in the other. It's kind of like a cheese grater. And this is how you hold it. You take the um, back part that's large and just set that in your hand very gently and hold it like that. And then what you can do is you can move across the piece like so. What we're going to do is because we don't want to put this on the table like that. What will happen is we'll damage parts of it. So what we can do is we can grab that cradle again, put that down, and then throw a little bit of crumpled up newspaper in there. Like so. And then just lay that down like that. Okay. So now that's protected and that's not going to get damaged. So we'll take our sure form and we'll flatten that. There's a little bit of an edge going around here. So we can take that shirt form and push and take that edge down. Make it nice and flat. And see all the material that comes off? It's, there's quite a lot, actually. There we go. So. <laughs> oh, oh, wonderful. Let's use that one as, a, as an example. So there's, there's ZZ's cast. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty awesome. That's a really good one. That's yeah, a nice one, yeah. But it's kind of messed up on the back. So here's how quickly we can fix that problem. We set this down. Actually, let's grab another one of those. Set that on top. There we go. Okay, make that nice and sturdy so that it doesn't move. And then work that plaster. So, whereas this one took only one or two swipes with the sure form, this one is taking more swipes because there's more material that needs to come off. So notice also how hard the plaster is. It's because it's been sitting over the weekend and now it's quite dry. So it's very dry in here. So all of the moisture is getting sucked out of it. There we go. That's pretty good. We'll turn that around. We'll work it from the other side. If you find it too difficult to hold on to it while you're pushing the shirt form, what you can do is set it like this and then work downward. That way you're using the table as leverage and it's easier. now pretty flat. We're not too worried about this part here, but we could, if we wanted, take that down a little further. Okay, so our blade went out of alignment. So you can see where the tool rubbed the plaster left a mark there. So let's set that for a sec. And we're going to tighten up the tool again. There we go. These are not the best sure forms. I bought them at Canadian Tire. They're fairly inexpensive. That's why you have to adjust them every now and then. Still, they're pretty sharp. And they take material off very quickly. So that's pretty good. It seems very flat now. What we're going to do now is we're just going to run it across here. 
take that down. There. Nice. And we'll leave that for the moment. And we'll work this out. Be careful with the hand that you're holding the piece. Don't get your fingers in the way because if the tool comes across and rubs against your knuckles, it'll take off some skin. So keep your hand well back of where the tool is moving. Very important. Okay. That's pretty good. Let's see all the material that's come off of there. Okay, now, um, so ZZ, what do you want to do about the surface? Do you like it no. being rough like that? No. Okay, so let's work on ZZ's piece. We're going to make the surface a little bit smoother. It's right now. It has, <clears throat> it's quite rough. There's lots of uh, pits as well as protuberances. So first what we'll do is we'll take off the protuberances. So that's the easier part. We'll set that aside for the moment. And we'll begin with this larger tool because I think it's quite useful. You can feel if it's sharp or not. If it's not sharp, I'll show you how to sharpen it. That's not difficult to do. What we can do is just begin. Uh -oh. <laughs> that squeaky sound is bothering a few people. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Let's try this other one. That could be because the tool is kind of dull. Oh no, that doesn't matter. That's even worse. Sorry guys. Okay, so you don't want to be too rough with it. Just take it take the material off a little bit at a time. And check your progress as you go. But we've already done a considerable amount with just a few strokes of the tool. We've done a considerable amount of smoothening. It looks quite a bit smoother now. But what we're going to do is, is we're not going to stop there. Um, we're going to take some sandpaper. So I have this here. It's uh, 120 grit sandpaper, and I've <clears throat> broken the sheets up to fit on a sanding block. And this is how um, you work with the sandpaper. So this, I think, is 120 grit also. You don't use it on an area like this. Because this is a flat surface, it's better to use that on flat areas. I, I would say don't worry so much about this part of your sculpture and don't worry so much about this part of your sculpture. But this is how it works, right? You just push your sanding block along and it takes material off. So it's like a much more gentle way of removing material than the sure form is. But what happens with the sandpaper is that it gets loaded up with material and then it's really um, less effective so what you need to do is take one of these small wire brushes and just clean that off okay that's all it takes just a few swipes and you're good to go again you can also use that here i have to adjust this one more time because it's going to align it there we go. You can also use this to clean your shirt form. Just go in the direction of the teeth of the shirt form. See those rows are kind of diagonal, so you want to follow those rows of teeth. This shirt form has some junk in it that I have to get out later. Okay, so because this is a curved surface, we're not going to use the sanding block. But what we'll do is we'll grab one of these pieces of sanding paper and we'll break it up into two pieces just by folding it like that. And then 
and voila. So now we have a nice little piece that fits in our hand very well. And we'll just use our fingers like this. So, after a few swipes of the sandpaper, now that surface is significantly, significantly smoother, okay? But there are a couple of pits. So you see there's a pit right there, maybe there, there. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill those. Now that we have that uh, sanded smooth, what you could do, and what I would suggest is probably the best strategy would be don't stop here but go over the entire surface and keep taking material off where it needs to come off smoothing down the entire thing before you fill the pits that way you're you're using your time more efficiently you're not stopping to change tools every few minutes That's, that's a big piece there, so we're going to use the shirt for it to carve that down. Like so. There we go. And then we'll clean that up. this clean side. <clears throat> Probably the best way to hold the sandpaper is to kind of cradle it like that so that it, you're supporting the back of it with two fingers and then the rest of your fingers, your thumb, uh, your ring finger and your pinky are holding it securely against your hand. Can you give your own nose to it? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but <clears throat> because we have all of these, <clears throat> excuse me, because we have all of these very uh, difficult corners and crevices, we have to use some different tools for that. So, for instance, we can use this tool to get in there around the nose, okay? But probably the tools that are even better than that are these ones. So we can get in there with a tool like this and just scrape away until we feel like it looks the way it's supposed to, okay? And then once it's pretty good, like, do it until you're almost completely satisfied. Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Is there a bucket I can borrow? Um, over there. In the middle of the table. Can I like, can I have a table? Oh, uh, we're going to use it actually in a few minutes to okay. cast. Maybe that bucket there. There's, it's a smaller one. one. Okay. That one you can take home. Um, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, all right, where was I? Right, with sandpaper, with the sandpaper, what we want to do, let's uh, clean that. There we go. If we want to get in there, then what we have to do is we have to really bend the sandpaper so that we have a, um, a shape that's very similar to the area we're going to work in. And then very carefully work away at that surface. So, <clears throat> the majority of the material, the bulk 
in other words, is taken off with tools like these. Okay? Those are for the bulk of the material. As you get down to finer and finer surfaces where there's not a lot to take off, then you get down to using uh, smaller tools and sandpaper. And I think that this 120 grit is probably as fine as we're going to go with this project. So, I'm not going to do the rest of it because I want you to have something to do. What, we're do. what we'll do now is we'll fill in some of these pits and crevices um, that, we, that we don't want. You don't want that, do you? Okay, so let's, let's fill that in. So the first thing is that we need to make sure that that's kind of um, clean. So let's grab a paper towel. Could you grab me some paper towel off of there? Maybe uh, just dampen it a little bit for me. And uh, a damp paper towel, I think, works perfectly well for this job. And you can see, that's perfect, yeah, just like that. You can see all the material we've already taken off quite a bit. We haven't been working very long. Thank you. So there we have a damp paper towel. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean that. So we want to make sure that the dust is gone. Okay. That's pretty good like that. And we'll just set that aside because we're going to want to use it again. So this is the filling compound that I think works the best. The reason for that is that it seems like a pretty high quality product and it's pink. The reason that that's good is quite simple. When you put it on, you can see where you put it. It won't stay pink, so don't worry. Mm -hmm. It'll, when it dries, it turns white. So these are the applicators that I've made for us. It's, what this is, it's vinyl that uh, I got at Home Depot. Uh, you can buy lengths of vinyl like that um, off a roll. And normally these are used against the floor where the wall touches the floor as a baseboard around the, the wall. But they're so nice and flexible, and they have this nice little lip on them. So what we'll do is, is we'll grab a little bit of the spackling compound, and we'll apply it to the piece. And what I'm doing is I'm bending the vinyl so that it conforms to the shape of the surface that I'm working on. Do you want to do that before you start shaping it, or do you want to do it after you start getting all the gross stuff up? So I think that uh, this is a good thing to do after you've taken down some of that gross stuff, as you call it, <laughs> that <laughs> roughness. If you take the roughness down, then you can see better where the holes are, and then it's easier to fill them. You don't have to fill it and make it perfect with one pass, okay? Like, that's good enough right now. Um, we'll let it dry, and then we'll go back and we'll do it one more time. So, two passes with this material, and you're in pretty good shape. What's the dry time on it, Terry? So this is maybe about 20 minutes okay. to dry. Is, would that be okay for kind of like building stuff up? Because like I said, one of my arms is kind of like bent. It depends so how it depends how high we, we want to build it. How, what, how high do you want it to be? Like just a quarter of an inch, half an inch? Um, I don't know, probably kind of thick because yeah, it got like bent. So oh, kind of right. make it like rounded again. Okay, this will work, but you don't want to put it on all at once. You want to put on a thin layer, let it dry, put another thin layer on, let it dry, and keep doing that until it's built up to the point where you're satisfied. Okay. So one thin layer at a time, and uh, eventually it'll be good. 